we're officially in slingshot season. And by slingshot season, that means whenever the guilds go to bed, the other one slingshots themselves ahead of the other guilds. And Yeah, go to sleep ahead, wake up behind. That is the uh, the phase of the race world first that we're <laughs> in. And it's, I'd say, fairly early in the race for it to get to this point. Often there's a little bit longer of a kind of catch-up time for Echo and uh, Method even a little bit to, to catch up to where, you know, Liquid and maybe BDG are at. But this time around, bit of a bit of a different story. Okay. That being said, yesterday my prediction was that Magmarax was going to be at about 40% when we recorded today. Magmarax is extremely dead, and N Echo of Naltharian is also, you know, barely holding on to life here. Uh, at sub 25 percent so uh, this race is going quick yeah looking at the past 24 hours where we were um 24 hours ago was liquid it was at 21.9 percent on Ziskarn. since then and i think we're going to start with specifically what happened to liquid they achieved two world firsts pretty quickly this is the Ziskarn kill honestly was quite impressive with how they were able to finish this off uh, they ended up tanking the boss into the corner which is where one of the safe zones are they did this delayed strategy of deactivating these mines kind of late. And so that allowed them to extend the enrage out on the fight just a little bit further where people initially projected it was going to be. They ended up extending it to about 630. Then they pulled Magmarax three times, took a break for Mythic Plus for like two hours while they devised a strategy. And then they walked in and kind of trounced Magmarax in 18 pulls or something like that. I, I think that this comes down to the fact that in, in we predicted that Magmarax could potentially be a wall. And the reason it wasn't was, one, the guilds already knew what to kind of expect. And two, the tuning was so light that the guilds have the gear to be able to kill Magmarax without too much friction. Um, and so it was basically the exact same thing as they saw during Mythic Raid testing, and they just waltzed in and smacked this dog well, down. It's a pretty different fight, actually, than the, the testing version, because the testing version was like the entire room was covered within lava within like two minutes because you yeah, but they had made these it, random you, spawns. You couldn't full soak them. So they, I think this might have been a case of like a boss release that was pretty different from the tested version, and that might have been why it was hard for Blizzard to know exactly what it was going to look like the way that Liquid, and then, of course, everybody else now will be killing that boss, is, uh, like, for the first 50% of the fight, you don't have any fire on the floor, you're just full soaking it, and then for the rest of the fight, you're doing this very controlled move away from the, the side where the fire is, putting some old fire, or putting some new fire back in the old, soaking a few of the other new spawning fires, and then, at the end of the fight, you're just sacrificing people, sending them into the fire, and, uh, yeah. and killing the boss without, like... You don't really add it mu that much more raid damage after the first 50%, right? And you sort of start by loading up on stacks and, and on raid damage. And then for the rest of the fight, you're basically just saying, all right, we're going to start sacrificing our space in the room. But it's a big room. And now that it's under control, it is uh, very easy to do that. I'm, so I'm surprised that this fight ended up going this way. It's yeah. very, very different from the PTR version, which the fact that you couldn't fully soak the puddles on, on the PTR version, I think, was a pretty important way that that kind of you you didn't really ever feel like you had the room under control i agree um okay and so then moving forward liquid kind of went to bed almost immediately after magmarax died and so yeah, now they, we can they take turned off competition mode and pulled pulled echo of Neltharian a couple of times but yeah uh, they were just you know doing some testing getting some data which is it's a normal thing like if you're two bosses ahead and you've got a boss you can pull and get some info uh you're gonna do it right and mm -hmm. you don't want the other teams to get that info so particularly when it's at the end of the raid day it's pretty common to see a team in that spot turn off their uh, their stuff. And then the two European front runners woke up and and Echo down Vigilant uh, Steward Ziskarn in 37 pulls and killed Magmarax in 16. And Method kind of matched it and honestly was better on both Ziskarn and Magmarax pull count wise where Method were able to kill Ziskarn in 34 and Magmarax in 15. Yeah, Method looking very solid here. Echo, of course, also. But I mean, the comparisons, well, we saw that kill clip from Liquid of Ziskarn. Echo's was... Somewhat less clean. Rather than having 16 <laughs> players alive, they had zero. They had a, a priest in angel form, somehow keeping the boss uh, from resetting for another millisecond, and that was enough for that last dot tick to kill it. It was a uh, wild finish there. But yeah, I would say, you know, starting the starting the day here, there was this feeling that the Skarn and Magmarax would fall pretty quickly, and then Echo of Naltharian would be, like, the bulk of the work. Um, I... Th I felt like Ziskarn took a little bit longer for Echo than they would have hoped. But it did still eventually fall. Magmarax still went down. I would say it was it was more like 
at expectation than, you know, exceeding it for Echo. But then Echo of Neltharian progression was quite good for them. That was uh, yeah. that was pretty impressive. Here we can see some of this mythic fight where Echo ended up getting down to 25% with their remaining raid day, uh, moving into first place in the race. And uh, what a, an encounter is quite different again from PTR. Those volcanic hearts no longer have the line of sight mechanic and instead just have a 25-yard radius circle, 50-yard diameter for those math nerds out there. That thing is... Uh, almost three times the area of the heroic version of them and five go out or something. It's a uh, wild. An another major discrepancy too is Neltharian's circle that he does whenever he does the fire is much smaller than it was during testing, but then the fire proceeds to grow to the size of what it was during testing, allowing you to have a little bit more space. I, I am kind of surprised of how they changed the, the volcanic hearts from PTR testing to now, but with that being the case, yeah, Echo able to get down Neltharian to 22%. Is it concerning? I mean, I guess there's a worry that Neltharian, and I think this is a topic that we need to discuss, is the race going to end within the next 24 hours, maybe? I So Sarkarath, historically, the last boss is where, you know, the bulk of the race happens, right? Like, Correct. It's It's been like that for forever. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Sepulchre was maybe a good example where, like, you know, there were a lot of hard bosses up until then, but Jailer was still a week. Razageth was still almost all the prog in Vault of the Incarnate. Sylvanas, Sylvanas, I think, was one of the shorter ones, as was Sire Denathrys, right? Those were the kind of, like, short-ish end bosses that end under the 200 pull counter. It was still two and a half but days. But even still, we're talking about, like, two, two or three days of prog, right? Yeah. So I think we're moving towards a world of this race ending around seven or eight days in, um, which does add some worries about the old reset because depending on the Sarkarath situation, right, you can you can pretty easily imagine a world from this point where Echo of Neltharian dies midday uh, through the through the raid day that like Liquid or I guess maybe at the end of Liquid's raid day in the middle of Echo's next raid day, Echo of Neltharian dies. They get onto Sarkarath, get some good prog on Sarkarath, work through the early phases on like Sunday, Monday rolls around, Sarkarath is now getting pretty low. Then Tuesday rolls around, North America gets the reset, you get an extra Spark of Shadow Flame, you get an extra Heroic Clear, <laughs> you get an extra oh. uh, um, Vault. All of a sudden, that's like plus seven eye levels or something this tier. It's more than in previous tiers because of how good that Spark Dude. is going to be as well. And then Sarkareth may just die to a, a raid team that is one big reset ahead on Wednesday before Echo get theirs, which if that, like that, that possibility is always there every race. It has yet to actually really happen exactly that way, but it's always a fear. And I think that there's definitely, depending on the Sarkarath tuning, if Sarkarath is that kind of middle tuning, a little bit harder than, you know, uh, easy enough to die in this first reset, but not so hard that you need a lot of time in the second reset to prog it. Uh, the fact that there haven't been any significant walls before Sarkarath will mean that all that prog will I get done in the first reset and we'll just be waiting for that second reset's worth of gear to send it home. And I mean, the last time we saw a first reset clear was... Um, Sylvanas, was, yeah. Was Sylvanas. But ultimately, the first reset clears seem like they've been kind of put at bay with the heroic week situation with tier and how you have to gear up specifically. But this seems like it is a raid tier that is significantly... Yeah, I mean, there's no walls, right? It, it's like, significantly under pull count relative to other raid tiers historically. It's, I mean, the thing is, Echo of Neltharian is sitting at 25%, right? Like that? Yeah. 25 to 0 could be 20 pulls. It could be 100. Like that That range is so, possible. I want to talk about that for a second. Both Echo and Liquid are lusting Echo of Neltharian on pull. And as it currently stands, I'm not sure if they're going to have the damage in phase one to be able to move that lust off of on pull because, right. because of their room clearing phase. And what you see right here, there is a... It's a soft enrage on the fight. But it is effectively a hard enrage for like these portals, and and the boss is going to pretty much blow you up. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's sort of like Ragalon, where it starts casting the last bomb, and you don't yeah. have anywhere safe to go. Here, I'll go. I'll, I'll go back because like this is the very end of the fight. But like th this is exactly what it's going to look like, and eventually you're going to run out of these bombs, and you're going to die. I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't run the numbers on it yet, but there is a world where guilds could get kind of stuck progging the final 5% of Neltharian because they don't have lust for right. that last phase. And that might be a part of the case where we start seeing like 
the drop a healer conversation begin or something like that, right? I the, could like, see that happen, yeah. The Rygalon, you know, it somehow Echo have found a way to do this without a healer. Somehow Liquid have found the DPS with the extra healer, those sorts of things uh, we've seen happen in the past. Those could be the things that take this boss from a 50-60 pull boss to an 100-150 pull boss. That can mean that you have, like, a... That, you know, if we if we don't pull Sarkareth until Sunday night or Monday morning, then all of a sudden it's it's possible that it goes a little bit deeper into that second reset. But uh, still, it is it's a big question mark. And the, and there's really only that question left is like, how killable well, is Echo Neltharion? And then how hard is Sarkarath, right? Like Sarkarath is we're out of bosses that could be hard, right? We thought, OK, Rashok might be a little bit hard. OK, Zaskarn maybe. OK, Magmarax. Like, no, none of those. I none of those were more than 50 pulls. I, and, and let me cook for a second. There's a chance that Liquid might be able to be in a better position just due to the gearing decisions that they've made this tier over both Echo and Method. Because if you look at Method's item level, they're currently uh, they were pulling Echo Neltharion at 434.2. Liquid is pulling it at 435.7. Now Echo doesn't have competition mode currently enabled, so you can't see their real time item level. Right. But they killed Magmarax at 434.3. So Liquid has about an item level and a half over all of the other guilds, which. I mean, that's a big deal. Like, that is, that is a lot of damage. And if Echo of Neltharion becomes a wall, or potentially even Sarkarath, I think that Sarkarath is the one that we're looking forward to a little bit more. But say potentially Echo of Neltharion last phase becomes a bit of a problem. That item level and a half, I mean, it could be make yeah. or break. You know, historically, when we think about these one-week tiers, Jaina and Sylvanas, which were the last two second raids of expansions, <laughs> um... You think about those tiers, they were only one week clears for one team in the world, which is the Echo team, basically. Yeah. Everybody else took multiple, but Echo was able to find extra eye levels and get those killed in the first reset. Is this going to be a tier where we see the reverse happen? Is this going to be the tier where we see Liquid uh, finding the way to gear themselves up, get that extra eye level, and be the only guild in the world to clear on reset one? Because, I mean, you know, that it's, it's definitely a possibility. If they've got, if they can get the higher eye level, if they've been finding them out of M. Plus, They've been, you know, being more efficient, potentially getting better drops. On the other hand, maybe the eye level as well is just an indicator of like which raid group has more people that are wearing Aranog rings still, right? Which raid group has more people uh, that are yeah. wearing uh, the Onyx amulets that are going to drag your eye level down. The socket thing as well, like 421 socketed belt versus 435 uh, unsocketed belt. You know, that's going to show up pretty differently. But in terms of DPS, basically the same, right? I feel like Liquid's actually kind of had like a a more calculated strategy this tier than they have in the past. Normally they play with like a run and gun style where they just kind of go based off of intuition and go based off of what things kind of feel right with what they are actively doing. Yeah. But this tier, it feels like they've been really calculated about when they're going into mythic plus when they're optimizing their gear, when and what they're sending their crafts on and, and making sure that they're, they're not going to end up in a situation where we, complain about their gearing uh, decisions for another tier. Yeah, because there, there's been a few tiers where the kind of story has been second-guessing the liquid split decision-making, right? And, like, Sylvanas is a good example of this, where it's just like, okay, they kind of ran the wrong uh, number of splits here, right? I don't think we could second-guess at this tier because they are, right. they are so far ahead in item level. Now, if they end up losing the tier, I don't think it's going to be based off of splits. It's going to be based off of other things. And I, I honestly think that even though they're in third place right now, they've been looking really good. Yeah, and again, you know, they're they're gonna look bad in these videos because we are recording them at basically the worst possible time for Liquid's uh, scoreboard. Right, we're recording it right after Method and Echo have gone to bed, but near the start of the uh, Liquid day. So yeah, uh, we could easily be recording this video twelve hours d separated from now, and Liquid would be in. The I mean, every, Liquid, every Liquid day, had an right? ins Liquid had an insane yeah. day yesterday. I was I was I sat there and I go I was watching. I go. Liquid might win, win the race based off of yesterday, like what the past 24 hours have unveiled, but Echo and Method, both of the guilds were able to match it. I think that Method was the most surprising one for me. Watch it. Yeah, Method have, you know, they've been looking closer and closer, and to get world first, they're going to need to beat both Echo and Liquid, which uh, was part of the reason in our prediction video, we thought that was a very, very slim chance. Me especially, I, I had it at around 1%, but the chance that they could beat either Echo or Liquid, right, and get world second, I definitely think is is real with how they've been playing here so far. I think we're entering a world where it is there is potential for it to happen. Is it likely? I would still say I'm and, giving and like we still haven't seen method playing from ahead yet. That's the thing is they've been doing a good job of playing from the second or third place position, right? And that's a good, that's killing a very the bosses good point. that have been killed 
already, and they've been killing them efficiently and quickly, but eventually to win a race, unless you get this really odd spot where the entire race is pro or the entire boss is progged, but it's at like 3% and nobody's actually executed properly. Like that's a spot where a method could win without having ever having been ahead. But uh, otherwise you basically have to actually be able uh, to get to a phase that nobody's seen before, develop a good strat, execute it and kill the boss within a pretty short amount of time. And that is a skill that so far only Liquid and Echo have ever executed in the modern era. Method, I think, have player they have players that have done that before. They have players that are ex Echo Raiders uh, on their roster, that's but true. it's still a big question mark for them. So uh what's the stats on killing the penultimate boss and winning the race world first? Uh, Liquid kills the penultimate boss and wins and loses different times. Yeah. If Echo gets world first on a penultimate boss, they've never lost. That's uh, that's been how that's gone. That's uh, that's, that's, that's how the math works been, on that one. Okay. Yeah, they've always won after getting if they can catch up and kill the second to last boss first. They also always kill the last boss first. Liquid, it's good. You know they they can't win without. They haven't yet won without doing it, but they have. Uh, they have also lost after killing the second to last boss first. Uh, there even was one time where they killed the third to last boss second, killed the second to last boss first, and then still ended up losing that race, uh, even though they had, like, re-overtaken the lead. That was, of course, Mithrax, first to Gahoon, first to the moon. Oh, my God. I Dude, yeah. I haven't thought about that. That is bad. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That That's is a, a blast from the past. Yeah, I, that was the, that that, I the... think that was the first time where people realized, like, oh, my goodness, this guild is real, right? They are yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. world first contenders. And they, they came within a few hundred thousand hit points of world first on Gahoon as well, which would have changed history. Okay, well, what are the projections? Predictions within the next 24 hours. I'm thinking so I, like... I think we, Sharkareth at 78% is what, what'll happen when we're recording tomorrow. What's What does P1 Sharkareth end at? Uh, 60? 65? I think it's time-based, but I think you can force push it at 60. I'm pretty sure, at least on Heroic, it's time-based. I don't know what it is on Mythic, but uh, okay. on, on Heroic, it's like it either is 60 at force casts or it just does its full cast sequence and then pushes at like... You know, 62 or 63 in a lot of splits. I think, I mean, we, so we've been hedging our bets on the under a lot of the times for this race rule first because that's normally better. Yeah, we're kind of expecting the, that they're, they're, at some point they're going to encounter some <laughs> resistance, right? But the over has been, the over has been really winning this tier. Yeah, do you want to take, you want to take like Sarkarath 40% or something? That what would be so anticlimactic. Yeah, I'll take yeah. I'll take Sarkarath forty percent. I'll just all right. Be... <laughs> you got Sarkarath forty percent. I got seventy eight percent. Write them down, and uh, let's see where we're at tomorrow. Everybody watching this now, write your predictions down as well, and we can all compare in uh, Somebody, one day's Somebody's going to be like Neltherian point five percent, and they're going to be right. <laughs> that would be cool. Hey, if we, I I would choose for that to happen, I'm I'm not ready for the, this race to be over just yet. All right, cool. We'll be back uh, with the video tomorrow. Hopefully not the end of the Race World First series, but I mean, the crazier things have happened and uh, we'll see what's going on in the next 24 hours. We'll see you guys later.